Researchers from the Bioinspired Photonics Group, led by Dr. Sylvia Vignolini in the Department of Chemistry at the University of Cambridge, are interested in understanding more about the microstructures found in nature and how they can give rise to different colours. Learning more about how the natural world achieves this provides exciting potential for designing new bio-inspired materials as sensors of the future. Biophotonics is a term to describe the photonic crystals found in nature that are responsible for giving materials their colour in a way that is different to the colour that results from pigments and natural dyes. Typically, biophotonic crystals are multi-layered materials and result in colours that are non-fading. Some well-known examples of photonic materials are peacock feathers, where the transmission is sometimes brown, but reflection can be seen as green, or the exoskeleton of sun beetles. Perhaps less well-known are the navy-coloured polyphrates, where their orientation and structural assembly of cellulose microfibrils are key to how they interact with light and produce their iridescent colour. So what you need is to have the structure that's about similar length scale as the wavelength of light, which is normally 300 nanometer. Um, so a, a good example that is not from creation would be the soap bubble. When light bounces off from the top surface and the bottom surface, um, there will be some light path difference for these two waves. And then this difference when they are uh, equals to a certain number, like basically n times your uh, wavelength of the light, then there will be constructive uh, interference. And then this light will be really enhanced so you see the color and some other colors that will either get scattered around or they just pass through. I work mostly with cellulose nanocrystal. When we disperse them in liquid, initially at lower concentration, they are just randomly uh, oriented and there is no preferential in orientation. But when we increase the concentration a little bit more, what happens is they start to form this uh, liquid crystal line phase, which we call cholesteric or carolimatic phase. Later on, when we further dry the material, what you get is actually a sort of film that has this multi-layer structure that I mentioned before. And, and this is the time where you start to have color, because now the periodicity starts to decrease to a few hundred nanometer, and the light starts to be reflected by this. Though these materials are still in their infancy, they are currently being studied for exciting applications, such as anti-counterfeiting tags, or large area and flexible humidity or pressure sensors. The material is made from benign sources such as hydroxypropyl cellulose, which is edible and can be used as fake tears, or even as a vegan alternative to gelatin. 